John, in Powell's interactions with all these different groups of people and this ability to get them to collaborate and, and compromise, you, you mentioned there's this wonderful example of that being put into action with John Wesley Powell's mediating between the Mormons and the Navajo. Yeah, you know, so uh, here Powell was out working with the Mormons, studying the Indians out in the American West amid a time of, you know, great awful friction, mm -hmm. you know, between a displa displaced peoples and newcomers fighting over the lands and a lot of bloodshed. and. Um, and really no example was worse than between the Navajos and the Mormons. Hmm. Um, and they, uh, uh, w w was a lot of bloodshed and a lot of misunderstanding. And Powell found himself with uh, the Buckskin Apostle, uh, Jacob, um, uh, what was his name? Uh, remember in a second. And, um, being a critical part of parlaying a treaty between the Navajos and the Mormons. And this was the first it had happened. And it was Powell's presence as a neutral intermediary between, so known by the Navajos for who he was, um, and yet known by the Mormons for who he was. He stepped in um, and really set the stage for um, a treaty that for a good amount of time settled down a lot of the violence between and led to some uh, uh, really important productive conversations between two warring parties. Yeah, that's that's really interesting and you know you often hear of the the federal treaties yes. out on the Great Plains but here we have John Wesley Powell, Mormons, Navajo. I yes, think that's really reflective yeah. of his ability to work with these different groups, this diverse settlement yes. in the patterns in the American West. Yeah, and he was also um, invited with his fellow Ingalls to, uh, I was actually commissioned by the government to put together a report on American Indians and kind of, you know, what to do with the Indian problem. Mm. And he got together and they traveled all over uh, in the course of a year with his other surveying. He broke off to do a lot of that, interviewed a lot of Indians, located, did a population study of where Indian populations were centered, how many were on reservations, made a lot of really, really interesting, I, you know, kind of recommendations to the government in their report on how to ease some of the sufferings in the um, reservations and how to kind of reconceptualize some of that. I and mean, this is something that people don't think about when they think about Powell. But there were terrible things going on where on a reservation, uh, the reservation system, of course, was uh, generally ham-handed and not really, uh, the, the Indians who were sent there were not given the tools to really do anything. And often, um, and Powell pointed this out, two Indian tribes that had a lot of generations and generations of animosity were placed on parcels right next to each other. Um, unfortunately, a lot of what uh, Powell passed on in the, his, angle, his report with Engels, the Powell Engels Commission report, were not followed through. And he felt a lot of bitterness about that. And there are some letters that reflect that, just saying, come on, you know, uh, there's just a lot of cheating going on. The Indian agents, the whole structure of Indian agents um, is just a uh, kind of a license for graft. He was pointing that out and he was doing all these things and nothing, you know, again, it was a case where he was finding. Um, it was something that no one person could solve, um, but he certainly was beginning to bring up some questions in a way. And part of that rooted out of the richness he knew hmm. firsthand of working with uh, the Indians and uh, uh, the very many different Indian populations of the Southwest and some of their knowing their traditions and speaking into those traditions in terms of talking about how to ease some of the you know, the violent and awful interactions. He was the one, a lot of the professional surveyors would go out with armed guards mm -hmm. out into Indian territory and all like that. He um, brought no guns and said, we will not have any guns and this will not be something that we will introduce into the, uh, into the equation. So in many ways, 
that early roots that we were talking about, you know, and his, some of his empathy. Again, he was a man of his time, so we still felt that the Anglo-white, you know, we, it, you know, was on a plane, had actually hit higher levels of civilization. But he also felt, too, that the Indian, American Indians, of all levels were capable of that, you know, and not just to be exterminated, but that they had incredible value and interest, in, you know, to add to the conversation. So not to push that in terms of it, we can say from the 21st century vantage um, that he was, uh, you know, had everything ga together on terms of that, but he went a long way towards you know, bringing some of those questions to sure. the fore yeah. in an interesting way. And again, this is a whole side of Powell uh, that is not uh, really discussed often. And I and I uh, I hope we can talk more about yeah. those important issues about uh, you know people being on the land and what he learned about and how he valued them. You know, the and oftentimes people who serve as these cultural bridges, they picked up. Uh, an Indian name, and Buffalo Bill was known as Pahaska, long hair. Did John Wesley Powell? Yeah, interestingly enough, name? you know, um, he, <laughs> you know, and long story short, you know, coming out of the Civil War, you know, in American Western in Western society, getting formed or you know maimed was kind of a you know, was a sign of kind of you weren't whole with God or anything like that. And, you know, and the Indians called him Caporets, which meant one arm off. And it was really an honorific. It was interesting to kind of see how an Indian culture, the Indian, an Indian culture could look at something like that in a very different light than you know, uh, uh, right after the Civil War when, you know, there was still a lot of stigma about disability. Um, so that's another interesting story, you know, about, uh, and you know, again, he was, he was paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew that. And uh, so that's a, just an interesting thing to see about these intermediaries and how they can help pave the, you know, how can they can, you know, in a very, very difficult environment of cultures clashing with so much awful bloodshed. And, uh, you know, there are some figures in there who are, you know, charting, uh, you know, a different course. Mm -hmm.